thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I really enjoy coming here and, and being in Hayes. It's always a fun time to be here, and so I'm glad to be here. Uh, um, let me jump jump out. By the way, I'll just mention here, our, my PowerPoint slides, the, the presentation that I have, is available on the Center for Real Estate website at wichita.edu slash real estate. And also on our website, we have a copies of the annual housing forecast and the economic outlooks that we prepare. So one of the things you'll see here is this Hayes, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Ellis County Econo uh, housing Outlook. This is a publication that we produce, and again, it's available on our website, and it's in partnership with the Kansas Association of Realtors. We've had an agreement with all the realtor associations across the state for a little over a decade, where we access each of the local multiple listing services and their, their data, including the Hayes Board of Realtors. And then we use those data to compile statewide housing statistics. But as a result, we also are able to prepare local statistics. And so we have data for Hayes specifically, for Russell, for all of the different regions throughout the state. And those are available from your local board offices. We put them back to those local boards so that they can release those statistics. And so we're grateful for that partnership that we have. Uh, and it, uh, it allows us, the benefit that we receive at the university is access to those data that we can use for our annual housing forecast. So as I go and do the annual um, forecast for the housing markets across the state, one of the things that I try and look at is labor markets. Are people comfortable with their jobs? Are they confident? Are they willing to make that big ticket purchase of buying a home? And the second thing that I look at is financing. Can they get the money that they need? Now, you've heard about the conditions in the labor market, and, and while there are some long-term concerns about population growth, overall, where we are right now is in a very tight labor market. People who are in the community who want a job generally are able to find a job, and there's upward wage pressure because of the tight labor market. And so from a housing perspective, the labor market conditions are actually pretty solid. We'd love to have more people moving into our communities. We'd love to see stronger employment growth due to that. But again, for people who are already here, the labor market is a fairly strong, solid labor market. On the financing side, what we see is that mortgage rates are incredibly low. And if you were at this conference a year ago, uh, I said, this is the year that mortgage rates are finally going to go back up to normal levels, meaning you know, somewhere above 5.5% or something like that. And of course, as soon as I made that prediction, like any good economist, the, the markets did exactly the opposite. Mortgage rates have fallen. We're down now more than a full percentage point lower than we were a year ago at this time. And it, it's something that certainly confounds most of us. A, a mortgage rate below 4%, and by the way, Mortgage Bankers Association, you'll notice, thrown its, it, 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 it's thrown its hands up in despair. They're no longer predicting an increase in mortgage rates. They are forecasting that the 30-year fixed mortgage rate will remain below 4% now through the end of 2021. So two full years going forward. Essentially, that's just, I think I used a technical term a few years ago, stupid low rates. They're, they're just not rates that make any sense in terms of a growing economy with healthy, normal financial markets and low inflation. We really should expect mortgage rates to be quite a bit higher. And again, I think somewhere in the 55 to 7% range would be normal mortgage rates. But you'll notice one of the caveats I gave there was normal financial markets. And we are still living in a world where financial markets are abnormal, still coming as out of the wake of the financial crisis of more than a decade ago. And what's been happening here is that long-term 10-year uh, treasury rates have continued to drop in large part because of the strong demand for treasury securities all over the world and the fact that 
people are looking for some kind of yield, and if they've got to be in the financial system, U.S. Treasuries are a place to be. And many places around the world right now, we're looking at negative nominal interest rates. So it's a very unusual situation, and that is what's driving down our interest rates here domestically. And so when will that change? Who knows? Does it seem normal to me? Not at all. Is it bad for the housing market? Nope, it's actually pretty good for the housing market. In addition to having very low mortgage rates, we've seen underwriting standards continue to ease and so that it is as easy now to obtain a mortgage as it has been any time since the housing boom in the early 2000s. It's a really, really great time to go out and try and find funds right now. So the impacts that we have here, current market fundamentals are solid, mortgage financing is widely available and cheap, labor markets are fairly healthy, um, really solid, solid labor market, really solid fundamentals for the housing market right now. That being said, it's important to recognize that all of this could change in a moment's notice. And so it feels more this year than it has at any other point in time that while everything just seems like it's just chugging along, same as it has been, things are going normal, it feels like maybe there's, you know, as we come up to the next intersection, there's a Mack truck coming that we can't see, and that whatever it is is going to blindside us that everything could change. But unless that happens, more of the same is exactly what we're expecting going forward. So what's our forecast for housing markets? Well, this is total home sales in the state of Kansas across all the different multiple listing services across the state. The maroon bars represent the actual sales, and then the yellow line is a moving average, so it smooths through that seasonality that we see, where home sales tend to go up in the spring and then tail off in the fall and winter. And what you can see is that underlying trend is that starting in 2011, we saw home state sales across the state begin to pick up and grow at a relatively slow but steady, healthy clip. Over the last year or so, however, home sales activity has begun to decline. Now, I'll talk more about that in a moment and the reasons behind it, but it's not because of lack of demand. As I mentioned before, the fundamentals in the labor market and the financing are very, very strong for housing market. The reason that home sales activity has begun to decline statewide is primarily due to a lack of inventory, not enough homes available for sale in the price ranges and in the locations that buyers want. So how does that compare with Hayes? Um, so this is total home sales in the Hayes Multiple Listing Service. And what you can see in some sense has been a slightly different story than what we've seen statewide. We actually saw some flat sales through 2013, 14, grew in 2016, a little bit of a tail off, but over the last year or so, we've seen some pretty solid growth in home sales activity. And there's going to be a story, as I, as I move forward, I'll, there, there's going to be a reason for this dichotomy between what's happening in the state as a whole versus what's been happening in the Hayes area. So um, what is our forecast for the statewide for home sales? We only forecast the large metropolitan areas and the state as a whole. We don't forecast all of the micropolitan areas, and Hayes is a micropolitan area, Ellis County, uh, for the state of Kansas. Uh, our forecast, as you'll see all across the board, is more of the same. So home sales activity we are forecasting will be down ever so slightly this year for the state of Kansas, down a little bit more next year. And again, that is due not to a lack of demand, but rather a lack of inventory. There's not enough supply to meet the demand that's out there. And that will become more clear here in one of my slides here in a moment. So I, I mentioned that we have this lack of inventory. How, how, how do we measure that? Well, one way to measure that is to look at the number of homes that are being sold, that are, that are being actively marketed, so listings available for sale in the multiple listing service, and compare that with the number of homes that are selling on a monthly basis. In this case, what we do is we take the average of sales over the past year 
as, as compared to the inventories of homes available, and we call that ratio month supply. So if there are a thousand homes available for sale in the multiple listing service, and on average we've been selling about 200 homes a month over the past year, then 1,000 divided by 200, that would be a five month supply, okay? Generally, we think of a four to six month supply as being a balanced inventory, neither favoring buyers nor sellers. And what you've seen here is both nationwide and in Kansas, that inventories have continued to decline year over year until we're at a very tight inventory across the state. And this is true in many, many, many markets, both large and small across the state. Inventory is now down at about a three months supply. That's, that's just almost unheard of tight levels of inventories. You'll notice here that we've had a slightly different story with, um, with the Hayes area. We've actually seen an increase in the month supply. And some of you might think if you're involved in the Realtors Association, maybe that's due to some of the changes and mergers across MLS systems and, and realtor boards across the state. But that does, shouldn't necessarily <coughs> affect sales. And this is the balance between sales and, in, and active listings. So both of those should be affected in relatively similar ways. What we've seen here is an increase in the inventory of homes available for sale. So, so Hayes, notice as I said, we saw stronger sales across Hayes. We are also seeing higher month supply. Essentially, you are not facing the tight inventory constraints that many other markets are facing. And therefore, when buyers come onto the market and they're looking for a home, they're finding more options available to them than people are in many other markets across the state. That those more loose inventories have allowed you to have your home sales activity increase in ways that have been constrained in other markets. Now it's important to recognize that not even, even across the state where we have very tight inventories, it's not the same for every segment of the market. And so one way to look at this is to segment the market by looking at different price ranges. And these are relatively arbitrary price ranges that I've picked. But I looked at homes that are listed below $100,000 as maybe the lower end of the market. Homes between 100 and 250,000. Often that's the very middle of the market, the most desirable homes where the middle market people, most buyers are looking. The upper middle market, 250 to 500,000. And then the upper end of the market, above 500,000. And what I want you to notice here is the blue line on the bottom where you have that really solid meat of the market, the most desirable homes in the most popular price ranges. The month supply is incredibly tight there, about a two month supply. On the other hand, when you get to the very top of the market, the luxury home market, which again is defined differently depending on where you are in the state, but the same story holds true across much of the state. Above 500,000, the inventories are much more flush. And when you get into some markets like in Kansas City and in Wichita, and you get to the real upper end of the market, say homes above a million, you could easily be talking well over a year's supply of homes available. So the point here is that even as we talk generally across the state of it being a very tight housing market and a lot of pressure, and we're going to talk about prices in a moment, there's upward pressure on prices, that's not necessarily true for every seller, for every buyer in every single market. There are differences that are important to recognize within markets and, and within sub-markets of, of different markets. So, um, I mentioned that we have these tight inventories, we have strong demand for homes available for sale. What's been happening to home prices? Statewide, we've seen very, very solid home price appreciation. So this is the year-over-year -year percentage change in home prices for the U.S., Kansas, 
And then what I called rural Kansas counties. I hate that term. It's not really accurate. Hayes is not a rural area. But Hayes would be included in that grouping. Technically what it is, is it is counties that are not in metropolitan areas of the state. So if you're not in the Kansas City metropolitan area, the Lawrence metropolitan area, Topeka, Manhattan, or Wichita, any county that's not in those five metropolitan areas gets lumped together in that yellow line. And that's difficult also because it, it merges together a lot of different regions of the state that can look very, very different. Western, Northwest Kansas could look different from Southwest, definitely looks different than Southeast Kansas or North Central Kansas. So a lot of regions, but, it, but it's the most accurate number that we get that actually can be relevant to Hayes in, in a meaningful way. And what you can see here is that during the downturn, when US home prices dropped pretty significantly over a number of years, the, the non-metropolitan parts of Kansas really didn't see any home price declines at all. Prices essentially flatlined. They stayed very, very low, not much appreciation, but no declines either. Since then, we've seen appreciation pick up, and over the last several years, average appreciation of about 2.5% per year. Now, that's slower than the state as a whole, 5% appreciation, but um, I think it, it tells that same story that we've told many times. Slow but steady wins the race, right? It's been, it's been slow, steady appreciation. We don't have the big ups. We don't have the big downs. That's true for the central United States as a whole. It's especially true for the non-metropolitan areas across the state. So our forecast for the state of Kansas home prices, you can see last year, average across the state, very strong appreciation, strongest in the Kansas City metropolitan area, but 6.2% average appreciation is really strong for the state of Kansas. We still think that strong appreciation is going to continue, maybe at a little bit slower pace, but 5.2% is still a very strong gain for Kansas. 4.4% is still a very healthy gain. We expect that to happen. Now, in your publication that you have there, I do have median sale prices for Ellis County. And um, that is, is not exactly the same thing, although over the long term it will track these home price appreciation measures. And what I think you can notice here are two things that you should take away from that chart. Number one is that the median sale prices in Ellis County are relatively high for the rural, for the non-metropolitan parts of the state. Your housing is very expensive here. $150,000 median sale price, meaning half the homes sold for more, half the homes sold for less, that is, that's a level, we only just recently passed that level in Wichita. We're up about um, $170,000 now, but for a long time we were down more in the $130,000, $140,000. So very, very expensive housing, but you've not seen real strong appreciation here over the last few years, essentially staying level, and in some ways, that's not necessarily a bad thing for you here because your housing has been so relatively expensive. Um, but uh, again, we don't formally forecast um, home price appreciation for the smaller markets, but there at least you can see what some of your recent trends have been. There's one other number that we do forecast at the state level, and that is new home construction. And the new home construction activity, you might think that if we have really, really strong demand and we've got tight inventories, that we should see home builders going up and saying, woohoo, great time for us to go out and build lots of new homes. Let's add lots of new inventory in the market because we've got the demand. And unfortunately, as we saw here, you know, for a lot of years statewide, we had home sales. Um, we had home price appreciation that was basically just flat, flat or negative. All through those years, construction costs continued to go up. Labor costs, material costs continued to get higher. And so as a result, even with the much stronger appreciation in recent years, it, new home construction still can't compete 
with existing homes. What it would cost to build a 1,500 or 2,000 square foot home in, in any market across the state, it costs a lot more to build it than what you could buy, than, than the price of buying an essentially equivalent home in the existing home market. And so as a result, we've seen new home construction activity remain very sluggish here. We're forecasting a, a, a pretty healthy setback this year. That's mostly in the Kansas City area. A bounce back next year, but even the 5,400 units next year is still less than the 5,600 units statewide that we saw back in 2018. And so as I said at the beginning, the forecast that we have here is really more of the same. Strong demand, but tight inventories are causing home sales activity to flatten out and be essentially zero, maybe slight declines. Because of the tight inventories, we're seeing some healthy home price appreciation, but we still have to see a lot more home price appreciation before we can see this new home construction really begin to take off. And so that summarizes my, my housing forecast. Um, we do have um, forecasts for all of the major markets across the state, in addition to your county outlook. Those are available on the back. You can find copies of those back there if you're interested in any of the larger markets. Or you can access all of the county housing outlooks and the major market forecasts on our website, which is wichita.edu slash real estate. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time here today, and you all have a wonderful rest of your week.